Welcome, everybody, to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. We have a fantastic show coming up for you tonight. We have artist Countess Catherine Buxhoveden and her daughter Alexandra Holzer, who's been with us many times, coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm author and ghost historian Mike Ricksecker. With me, as always, is my co-hostess, Vanessa Hogel. We have a fantastic show coming up for you tonight. Our longtime friend, Alexandra Holzer, is with us again. But with her this time is her mother, who is a, mar- a marvelous artist. Uh, she's also a Russian countess. Catherine Buxhoveden is with us. Catherine, Alex, uh, Absolutely wonderful to have you, and I was listening to all the conversation going on with uh, <laughs> with Vanessa before the show. I'm doing all the tech stuff because YouTube decided it just wanted to uh, it wanted to hiccup on us just before we went live. But um, you know, really fascinating stories, and it's wonderful to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, nice absolutely. To meet you both. Vanessa and Mike. Very nice to meet you. And, and I'm <laughs> Go for I'm it, so Vanessa. glad I I'm so glad I commandeered the goes. conversation before we got on air. I'll because... take it over, woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, it it, it 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 truly is. Uh, that part. Because that could have went all day. Okay. Um, but I, I just wanted to say that it, it it is truly such a pleasure. We have heard so many wonderful things about you from Alex. The time all that you've been on. All, all good. good. All good. Yes, yes. All absolutely wonderful. And um, it it just, I remember the very first time we had Alex on when we were talking about you and, and about your history and your family's history. And I, I just, I was, I was like a dog to a bone. I just wanted to jump on it right then and there. And I would love it if you would tell our, our viewers a little bit about yourself, where you come from, where your family comes from, the, the lineage and the interesting facts about that. I would be so tickled. I'll try to give you a little summary. Otherwise, you may be here a little long time. There's a little bit of history. Just, I'll just a little bit. A little bit of history. Yes. So I'll start with, all right. So uh, I was born in Italy, actually, but I'll give you my, my, my parents. My mother is Parisian, born in Paris, and my father is Russian, born in St. Petersburg. And so the Russian line that you mentioned, uh, the title, it comes from my father's side. And the Buxovitan family is a very old aristocratic family that goes back to the 800s, actually. Wow. wow. It's back to the 800s, primarily in Germany, primarily in Germany. And uh, in the 1200s, a bishop of Soviden went to, and founded Riga in Estonia, Latvia. I'm going to do this quickly. <laughs> and uh, that is primarily how the Russian branch stemmed. So the Russian branch basically started in the 1200s. And that's the branch that I come from. Most of my cousins and relatives are barons, which are German, and they're primarily in Europe. Uh, So that's my father's line. Uh, So my mother's Parisian, my father was Russian. I have uh, two older brothers who were born in France. Uh, My sister and I were born in different parts of Italy. And actually where I was born was a haunted medieval castle Oh, and, fantastic. Um, <laughs> so I'm amazing. so it's, jealous. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just amazing how how it comes around because I, I ended up meeting a man uh, who was who just started uh, ha- having his book published, Ghost Hunter, when I met him and got into this whole field when I basically grew up with it. And I was born in a haunted castle. It was a medieval castle in Tyrol, T-Y-R-O-L in Italy, it's in the mountains. And um, so it started there. I was already haunted, I guess. How long did you live in the castle? Was it your entire childhood? No, it was primarily only for a short amount of time because World War II broke out. Okay. So my family was told to move because if you know history, uh, my mother being French and my father being a white white Russian, he had no nationality. Ah. Uh, Well, the Italians were in France was not exactly on the side of Italy. Right, so we right. Were, yeah, yes. So we were told to move and we ended up living in Florence. So okay. for the duration okay. of World War II, we were in Florence, Italy. 
So when I, I was it? There. When when did you come to America? Uh, after World War II in nineteen, the end of nineteen forty six. Okay. Is there anything? Um, is is that? And I apologize for not knowing the full history of it. But did you did you meet Hans o overseas or here? I met him here. Here at a party, yeah. actually, mm -hmm. oh. in, in New York City. Wow! So I was you living went in New York City. Oh, wow. I can you imagine York, some of the initial <laughs> conversations just talking about, you know, growing up in a haunted castle and he was all about that. So those yes, had to be absolutely right. fascinating conversations. It was very funny because when, when I met him and, and he was just going to get his book published and he was being he was doing investigations. So I, that's when I started going with him to investigations at that at the very beginning when I met him. Wow. Okay. I worked with him for at least over 10 years. Wow. Oh, and a lot amazing. of your artwork was inspired by some of those investigations. Yes, yeah, so that was the key. So the I, so the idea was for me to pre, to represent some of the cases in art. So I did some in acrylics and oils at Oceanborn Mary's house. And then uh, we uh, thought it'd be a good idea to do some illustrations for the books, like The Lively Ghost of Ireland, I think has probably some of the best black and white i mean for me i like them the best uh that style so uh that's how i got into doing the illustrations for the books you know wow Fantastic. i'm gonna have to check that out because i've been to ireland twice yeah. love that and i want to see book. that yes. awesome so yeah. would you consider that the beginning of your art career no i was always an artist i mean i you know when i was a child i always drew and painted and then uh it, i always followed art. I didn't go into it professionally because I knew I wasn't going to make a living being an artist. But when I lived in New York and was married, I did have the opportunity to study at the Art Students League mm -hmm. on 57th Street. So I studied book illustrations, portraits, landscaping, live drawings, you know, mm -hmm. art studios. And so I did that for quite a few years, but uh, and always did art. I always, art was always something I did, uh, but professionally, I ended up uh, becoming an interior designer. I studied at FIT, which is okay. the, the Fashion Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. So I, I felt that I wanted to combine my creative art talents with the practicality, because I am a practical person, and I felt that interior design was a good field to go into. So, but art was always in my life. Oh, that makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> well, from, from the uh, from the uh, acrylics and the paintings and the pen and inks, then I went into pastels. We were discussing that mm -hmm. earlier. Uh, I went into pastels later on. See, you've inspired me. I'm going to try it. I'm going to yes. try that because I. Well, you guys were having a fantastic had. art discussion before the show. <laughs> I learned a lot just from listening. The viewers need to know I was in hog. <laughs> heaven you were okay i was it was just that it was, was like christmas for me okay. you're, you're too much a little bit no idea you're too much and you know what's fascinating about this field of parapsychology is when um when i was doing it when hans and i were doing it um i suppose you may be interested in the methodology absolutely yes. Uh, uh, that we did, um, which was very simplistic in comparison to what I've seen a uh, long time, you know, lately for the last years. Yeah, how's that, that changed over the years? Well, here's what we did. We basically had a tape recorder mm -hmm. and a uh, Zeiss Icon German camera. And we took uh, photographs only in black and white, no flash. And uh, that was basically, that was the tools. That was the tools. So we yeah. interviewed, for example, the homeowner, if the homeowner had, we went there because the homeowner had an issue with, a, with some paranormal occurrences. Uh, I would, we would come in with uh, a civil leak or an Ethel Myers who were the trans mediums. We, we only utilize a trans medium. Okay. And I would keep them company because we never, they never knew where they were going and Hans would be interviewing the onus, you know, what happened, what's going on, and everything would be on tape. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, and very simple. And then we, uh, we 
put the medium in a trance, would go under, and whatever came through was tape recorded. We would take photographs, and if anything, and very often times, things appeared on the photographs. And then Hans would go and do the research and find out from the local libraries or wherever he had to go, did such a person exist? Based on the information he got on tape, followed through and wrote the story. It was a, it was a beginning, a middle, and an end to it. Wow. That was a simple. Sometimes That's specific it mythology. Yes, it was a very simple way of doing it. No gimmicks, none of what I've seen. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, <laughs> I know what you mean. There's a lot of crazy things out there and, these days. And, yeah. Uh, yes, and, and there's no beginning or middle of end. They just go there and see what happens and nothing happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, right. so I don't know. But any, yeah, yeah, so that's I'm, what we I'm pitched. very opinionated. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and I grew up on a, a number of Hans's books and, you know, they fascinated me. I mean, my, the, when I moved from Massachusetts to Ohio, my mother gave me as an interesting way to remember that area of the country, Yankee ghosts. And oh, yes, it yes. took me like a couple stories to realize, wait a minute, these aren't just ghost stories. These are actually really true. And so I, I was hooked from there because he does tell a story through that. That's right. It was, yeah. And he also gave you a, a historical background. Mm -hmm. Sometimes of the area, uh, it, it was not just no. That's what made it interesting because you had a story, you had an event, and hopefully we had a beginning, a middle, and an end to that event to release the spirit that was stuck, primarily, and to release it. That was the goal of the whole thing. It was not meant for any, it was to release this entity. Right. When it, when it comes to the experiences or the, the investigations that you guys did and how you went about them with the beginning, the middle, and the end. Out of all of them, I'm not going to ask you what the most scary one was. I'm not going to ask anything like that. I want to, what I want to know is which experience stands out the most, whether it's the people that you were going there to help, whether it was the spirit that was involved, whether it was the information that was received by Ethel or somebody else, what stands out the absolute most for you in your memory? I It'd be hard for me to pick one because I did so many and they're all mm -hmm. various and different depending on what it was. Um, an interesting one, do you remember June Havoc? The you know name, Gypsy, yes. You know Gypsy Rose Lee? Yes. Okay. Okay, June Havoc was Gypsy Rose Lee's sister. Okay. Hmm. And June Havoc, though she was not as well known as Gypsy Rose Lee, she had a, um, she lived on, in New York, what was called Clinton or Hell's Kitchen. She had okay. a, what do you call a brownstone or a tenement? Mm -hmm. All right. So she had bought this house and it was haunted. And we went in with Sybil Leak, Earl Wilson from the Post. Mm -hmm. And the uh, thing that I remember a lot we, uh, with Sybil, we took a lot of pictures and the phenomena that appeared on the, on the photographs were absolutely a little scary in a way, but overwhelming. For example, you see Sybil sitting on a chair and all her legs are in black. Like oh, wow. it was a black oh, wow. screen that wiped her out. And uh, it took us quite a bit of time to really get through this. And what it really was, the bottom line, is that house was sitting on Potter's Field. Whoa. Oh. Potter's Field was an area where the poor mm -hmm. were buried. Yeah. And it was about a young woman that came through uh, that was obviously looking or the soldier who the person who was buried and she was stuck in this whole this whole connection of trying to find him and, and going over, over and over again but the photography I mean what came out in the picture was a whole other thing it was amazing so that was an interesting story I thought when you guys were doing this was there any type of because I know we're real big on this nowadays when we do something like that as far as cleansing, releasing the energy from us. Did y'all have any particular practices that you did during that time to release it from you? Yes. Yeah, so well, this is the whole thing. When I said there was a beginning, a middle, and an end, what I mm -hmm. meant by that was that when the entity spoke through Ethel or Sybil, mm -hmm. we got as much information as we could. 
because that was the only way we could do the research and find out that such a person exists, right? Okay. Right. Authenticate. Uh, at the end of it, that is when we primarily um, called on, let's say this young girl, called on her on a relative, like her mother or a father or, or a family member to come from the other side. That's how we basically explained it and help her across. Okay. Um, that's primarily was the method that we used. And, and when, and the reason we know it worked is because usually after that happens, there's, there's no more activity in the house. Okay. Uh, gotcha. The owners of the house will report that there's no more activity. So we know that it's gone, they've gone over. And you did a lot yeah. of follow up after the fact? Yeah, we follow up after the fact. It doesn't always work. And I'm not gonna mm -hmm. say that it does. We had some situations that were dangerous that we had to walk away from. Uh, and many did work. And some, there was never a solution. So it's it's really not black and white. Do you think that that's something that is hard for people to understand is that sometimes there just isn't a solution? There yes, just isn't. Sometimes. And well, you know, and also there's a difference between um, and just because someone has passed doesn't mean they're nice people. Right. <laughs> As I said, you know, we got a lot of people who are angry and nasty and uh, just as they probably were in their physical world. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the difference between, you know, a ghost, a geist in German, which means a guest, mm -hmm. or a spirit, a free spirit that comes and visits and hangs out. And, you know, there have been situations in homes where uh, people have had uh, sensations of someone's there, something's moving, but it's not threatening and they feel like it's a free spirit so it can come and go that's that's a whole other thing too exactly it, it depends it is it, it's not cut and dry it really is not i apologize if i'm echoing y'all i don't know where that's coming from there is a little bit of an echo but yeah there's not much we can do it about it at this point so okay okay all right um now do have a couple of questions coming in from the chat. Tom McNicholas at first was asking if you helped at all in writing of Hans's stories or if that was just strictly him with the writing bit. No, Hans did all the writing. I assisted him in the actual physical work and did the uh, illustration. Okay. Did you um, did you do any of the interviewing or anything like that at all? Uh, no, only if I went on television or radio, I did. Okay. You know, I was involved with that, but actually interviewing the uh, clients or I would call the clients or the owners. No, I let him do that. Now, how has that changed over the years as, as well? Because I've I've gone back and I've seen, you know, looked up some of the old articles, you know, from you, Hans, the, the transmediums, you know, some of the old, uh, you know, television interviews. And it seems like it's a very different world today than it had been back then. A very different. In what way do you want to know that? I mean, it's, it's just, I can't, there's no comparison whatsoever. As I said, when we were doing it, this, I'm talking about the 60s and the 70s, mm -hmm. maybe into the 80s. Uh, that's before all of this technology came in, you know, all these tools that they use. And I think some, some of them are probably good and you can utilize them. But I just don't like the whole sense of the of the sensationalism, the gimmickiness of it. And the, I just don't like it. I don't think it's authentic. I don't think that there's a goal to what they're doing. I think it's just for sensationalism. We had a goal, as I explained. We had a beginning, a middle, and an end. It was to release the entity from the house. And so that the owners would not have any more issues. Yeah. That is it's very simple. It's, there's nothing complex about it. Uh, <laughs> but what's been going on? Just, <laughs> it's like, sorry, can't make it exciting, but that's that's... The stories themselves were were the interest. They were. They were very, very interesting. Yeah. Because they were all over the world, and they were different from being in a field in Vermont to a, a decrepit castle in Ireland or even Bavaria, uh, which I was going to tell you about uh, in Wolfsegg. Yeah, Wolfsegg, go right ahead. Bavaria, Please. Wolfsegg, <laughs> Bavaria. <laughs> Wolfsegg, Bavaria. I had a picture of it. Uh, I can show it to you uh, here. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, can't tell. I can see it, anyway, yeah. Yeah. So 
um, this castle, by by the way, um, is privately owned. At least when I went, don't forget this many years ago. Privately owned by this man who bought it and is totally destroyed. I mean, this is it's not a lived-in castle and. He just put in a floor, so he invited us over. Of course, we were abroad. So we took a local Viennese Austrian woman with us, who was a medium, and we went at night, mm -hmm. climbing those st those uh, stone stairs to that second floor, which was like, felt like it was in a dungeon. I mean, just think about it, it everything is stone, right? You just visualize how old this right. is into this floor that he had put a floor down, no electricity, everything was candlelights. Oh, so I would you be in heaven. Into, nice. right, so you walked into this stone, massive room with just a floor, wooden tables, candles everywhere. I mean, just the move, the atmosphere of it. I mean, this is... That this sounds beautiful. That I enjoyed a lot was going to all these different environments the feeling of going into a place like that that goes back to the 1400s i mean it's just things like that yeah you're so, surrounded yeah. by history and for you i imagine it must have felt a little like home growing up in in a castle like you had uh, to me it was normal <laughs> it was yeah it was, it was just normal no, I, mean, yeah. I felt, I felt <laughs> comfortable actually wherever i went <laughs> no it was well, so, well, I'm, I have to ask you real quick, Catherine. I apologize for interrupting because I don't want to lose the question. Did you ever go back to the castle you were born in? Yes. <gasps> good, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a real good picture of it. But um, yes, I went back with my husband when, since we were traveling abroad a lot. So we did go back. And uh, of course, the owners, I wanted to go inside, but the owners came outside. They won't let me go inside. I wanted to go inside and, and, and try to remember uh, where I was, but I did get to see the outside. I was in the court area. So yeah, I did go back. I went Darn through, it's, it's near Bolzano. If you know where Bolzano is in Italy, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, in, it, it's in the mountains. Actually, Bolzano was an area where um, people that had TB during the, okay. were, went to that area to recuperate. Wow. So wow. the house or the castle was up in the mountains in that area. Because if I say if I say Merano, Merano was the village. If I say Merano in Tyrol, people would have no clue <laughs> where that is. So I have to say it's near Bolzano. So if you know Wow. Where is, okay. That is I wish you would have been able to go inside. That hurts my heart you couldn't. I know. I, I do have photographs of it, but I yeah, you know, I didn't I didn't want to intrude, you know, you can't understandable Don't understandable so. um that that brings me to another question just real quick with what you were talking about earlier and then i'm gonna shut up oh, um, what are <laughs> <laughs> what are your um considering your experience that y'all had previously in the 60s 70s and 80s um what is your opinion on mediums then and now well i don't think there's maybe much of a difference between then and now i think um, like everything else there are good mediums exceptionally good which i would say that's the few in my in my outlook there's a lot of mediums out there and i think some are mediocre probably with good intentions but really don't have the real developed skills uh but i would say in my opinion there are very few who are exceptionally exceptionally very good that really get information that you they they couldn't know it's not generalization that's very, I would say very few. Uh, Sybil Leak was very good as a trans medium, excellent. Ethel Myers uh, was also trans, but she was audio. She could hear mm -hmm. as well to get information. Um, I Again, you know, I'm always skeptic with gimmicky. Anything that's gimmicky, sensationalism. Right. Um, I'm skeptical about that, but that's my opinion. That makes sense. Uh, I also know that you most likely are born into it. It, it usually runs in the family. Uh, Sybil's grandmother was was a medium. 
Uh, okay. I think that has a lot to do with it as well. Uh, you can't learn it. I know there are schools in, in England and that can teach mediumship. And you probably can develop a certain amount of it, but I do feel it's inborn. It's it's in you. And, and this, I, I, yeah. and that's Go ahead. Uh oh, but, here comes take up trouble. No, no, I love this. There she Alex, is. Stop in. <laughs> I've been quiet this whole time. You should be very proud of me, Mom. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that, but that goes right into when you told me about your mother, Nana, right? Yes. My grandma, her mother. And Tom Paulette, yes. her sister, your aunt, yes. that um, in where they were in France, where they were, I don't know where they were staying, where Tom Paulette, who I got the chance to finally meet at 13 yes. when I went to Paris, it was yes. either a computer or a trip to Paris. Do you remember yes. that? Yes. So I got I went on the plane and went to Paris and I met Tom Paulette and Pierre, her husband, yes. and she, she heard creaking in the hallway. Do you remember that? That was uh, yeah, Tom that's. It was in Paris, and that's where they lived with their grandparents because their father was killed in World War One. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And his parents mm -hmm. uh, took, yeah, they took them in. Yes, in that hall, in that it was an apartment building in Paris, au 16e arrondissement. That's where they grew up. And that's, and my aunt was very intuitive and probably psychic, and she would pick up noises in the hallway. Uh, and go out, and of course there's nothing there. My mother was also very intuitive, but her intuition would be very much in dreams. She mm -hmm. would get mm -hmm. messages in dreams. Yep. But people sat on her too. Do you remember that? Well, yeah, she had apparitions. Sat on her. Oh, yeah. okay. That was an old friend. Yes, that's different. But I'm saying her <laughs> own self. An old friend came back as an, an apparition and sat on her? <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that is awesome. You don't hear that every day. <laughs> no, I don't think we've ever heard that. Oh, they sat on it. It's okay. We knew them. You know? <laughs> next, <laughs> next, next, <laughs> next question. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. My goodness. Yeah, I, okay. think that, I think that Alex got her intuition from uh, my from my mother's side of the family. My sister was intuitive herself. But in different ways, mm -hmm. in different ways. So uh, I didn't get anything. That's not true. That's, I, that's, I, I, I've seen your I, I've <laughs> seen your paintings. Yeah, I can do that. I so I beg that. to differ. Um, I can do that. Well, no, it's the thing is, even if it isn't in the same, even if the gift isn't wrapped the same way that I might have it or Alex might have it, mm -hmm. you speak through your artwork. Um, I looked at all of your artwork that I could find online and there were very specific pieces that spoke to me that not just from an artistic viewpoint, but like conference house, I felt yeah, something looking at that painting. I felt what was going on in that home. And that just might be how you funnel your gift. That's a good point. Okay. Isn't know, it? I think that's good. You know, I mean, with the illustrations for the books, uh, we could listen to somebody describe what was seen all day long, but without your rendition of it, without you being able to put that pen to paper and give it an actual physical presence, we might never fully understand the story. Mm -hmm. Therein lies your gift. And it's, it's an amazing that. one. Thank so you. you're very Appreciate welcome. That. You're very welcome. So I'm glad to see it that way. I really do. I think it's, I'm an automatic drawer. So I okay, right. do that for remote viewing. So it's, yeah. I can't draw a person out of my brain to save my life. Mm -hmm. It looks real. But if they're dead, I can draw them all day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, <laughs> okay. I can't make up a face that looks real. Um, so I, under, I understand that concept, and that's why when I saw those particular pieces, the hands on, on 27. Hands on 27, yes. Whew, I saw that, and I was just like, there is so much emotion behind that's, that's, this. Yes. Pastel. Yes. And, and so it's, mm. I get it. I get it. And I think that maybe that is not, it isn't just Hans's words that were so important to people. It was also your contribution and how you allowed them to see what maybe they couldn't see otherwise you're sort of more like uh trying to express it in a in a feeling way what it felt like 
exactly what the feeling was of that particular story exactly so yeah don't, don't downplay your contribution okay i won't thank you okay thank you <laughs> <Appreciate>. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, Mike, go ahead. Because I'm going to start crying. I don't know I how to follow all that up because that was an absolutely amazing compliment and it's absolutely true. So, thank you. Um, Mike. You're welcome. You're welcome. What I do want to ask, though, because yes, I read Hans growing up, but I also read this book by right here by Alex. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So I did get to Hi, learn a little <laughs> so I did get to learn a little bit about you um, a few years back when I picked this up. Um, so, you know, back in the day, you're, you're doing these paranormal investigations, you're traveling the world, you're an artist, but you're also raising a couple of young girls. So as you're being a mother and doing all these different things, how are you explaining this activity to Alex and her sister? Uh, we just told them what it was, and that was it. <laughs> right, and thanks to you, my sister was the one that would intercom me. Yes, we had the 70s intercom system in our apartment in Manhattan. Wow. She'd push the button, Alex, are you awake? Alex, I am now. I heard something in the hallway. Go check it out. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, actually... Um, we traveled with the, when Alex was uh, three months old, we took Alex and her sister abroad. We used to go abroad without them. <laughs> okay. And my mother would be in charge. Ah. So they, they actually spent a lot of time with their grandmother, mm -hmm. uh, which they adore. And, Good. but when Alex was three months old, we, I stuck her in a basket. <laughs> Uh -oh. on a plane. <laughs> You're just sister. finding this out now, Alex? <laughs> yes. I just put her in a basket <laughs> and I uh, took my mother and, and Hans and I and her sister and we went abroad. We went abroad every year. So Alex did her first steps in Austria. Wow. She did her first wow. step, which was almost a year and a half. And, and I talked to plants, I know. So she came, yeah, so she was already speaking to plants. She would go outside and she'd be sitting on the grass and she'd be shaking her hand like this, talking to the I plants. I want video <laughs> evidence. No, no, no. Did the plants talk back? So I was concerned about her, her mental state. <laughs> At that point, I was like, uh oh, what has, what has she picked up? <laughs> I love you, Alex. Now, <laughs> yeah, comes. And, a little late in the show, don't you think? <laughs> and don't you? And actually, the house we had a farmhouse. We had a farmhouse that we renovated in the mountains, and it was haunted. Yep. Oh, Alex, was. Alex, there you go. You They're all haunted. <laughs> well, so so it happens to be if something is following us around. I think <laughs> we're being I followed. You. We're being followed. You remember the story? I love this story. The headless woman that scared the, the crap out of my sister. <laughs> Ooh, do when tell. She, went to get water, she thought it was got, Nana. And oh, she got scared. It wasn't. It wasn't <gasps> Nana. No. Right, but Nadine was the one that got to. Oh, she thought it was. It. <laughs> yeah, but that farmhouse was, remember, you, you felt something. I, I, yeah, remember, I, it was the high chair situation where. You, you guys it. told me that mm -hmm. I was in the high chair doing this, and I'm I'm assuming back then the high quality of the high chair in Austria would have been phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> but no safety until it, until it went over. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, it was a farm. Believe it or not, it was a farmhouse, and uh, things were going around there too. I don't know. I think we're being followed by a moon shadow. <laughs> But really, that's uh -oh. not outside the realm of possibility. Yeah. You have children who are intuitive. Mm -hmm. You guys are deeply embedded it's in the paranormal. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's that I pretty much every place I live has has spirit activity, not yeah. because it's haunted, but because I am. Because you, so, well, you pick right. it up. Yeah. Well, you so, pick it I up. Mean, yeah. yeah, you guys are just, you know, a, a family of four, nice little bounce sheets, walking around, <laughs> just pick, picking stuff up. I mean, it's it, it makes perfect sense to me. But also, you kind of need to look at it as a little bit of a compliment because they felt comfortable with you. 
Well, they liked Alex because I, uh, it was the, in Austria at that farmhouse, I, it was actually the old lady that owned the house. Wow. Hmm. It okay. was, she owned the house. And that's, wow. who she saw. that's who she saw. I didn't see anything. But Alex did, and, and my mother did as well. My mother was also picked it up. But it wasn't a frightening feeling. Even no. that young of age, I could decipher the difference between that fear factor. Right, you can feel it. Right. right versus it's comforting yet scary yet comforting yet what it you have to your brain has to process that too yeah. so, and well, so that was just like another person to you maybe yeah like yeah. wow like another nana <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> just not with all her body parts put together right well you but know. the be the beautiful part about that alex is nowadays if somebody sensed that in their home due to what is normally out there on on television and everything their immediate response is fear must right. be bad hate it it's a demon hashtag you, yes hashtag demon <laughs> you know um, you did not have that response because you were not raised to believe no no that that that's a, that's truly a gift i was what? not raised to believe they would that they were to be afraid of either my no, first visitation was my grandmother you know right. so but yeah. nowadays, it's, it's, it's... No, my parents were very open. Nana was a big part of that circle. Mm -hmm. um, Nana was part of, I would say, if we had our own paranormal team, it was my parents and my grandmother and the people that they took company with. It was a family affair, and everybody was very honest and truthful, and there was no drama that would precede the night ahead. So if they would hold seances or whatever, it just was a normal thing with precaution to what you're dealing with. So there would be an educational bit of information prior to that to explain what you're about to experience or what you could experience and, and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and what have you. So our As family- As it should be. Yeah. Right, exactly. Our family was very open. And to this day, my mother and I and my sister all, you know, collectively go back and forth intuitively kind of, you know, blindly finding our way through our life path as we're always changing and growing and we have things in our lives happen. I'm in the center of that trying to field what I can pick up on and going back to the roots of what I was taught by both my parents, not just my father. My mm -hmm. mother was a huge part of that. Oh, sure. And my grandmother, her mother. So you see, this is, this is how I've tried to raise my son as well. And I just, I, I, I'm not going to say that people that don't do that are doing a disservice, but people that don't do that are doing a disservice <laughs> uh, because anyway. yeah. I'm not going to say it, but I'm going to say it because it's that we can't, we can't move forward. We can't learn. We can't help if we always fear. So I, I want to commend your, your parents, especially on not raising you in that environment, because it's made you the well-rounded, interesting rebel go-getter that you are today. So, I mean, I, I, I think, that, <laughs> you know, I love you, girl, you know, so, I mean, I think that's amazing. And, you know, uh, Vanessa, what fear, fear is usually the absence of information. Right. Bingo. What, what yeah, we fear what we don't your... understand. Yeah. Yeah, so Either you accept the information as this is what you're looking at, this is the possibility of what you're entering or what you've experienced, or you can just go deny, deny, deny. Well, you, you get know? into the uh, the fear factor of uh, things that you hear or things that you read, and you start believing all of that uh, Hollywood fearful things. It's a demon, or it's evil, or it's this, it's that, and you get into that aspect of it. And of course, you're going to twist yourself up in a pretzel with fear, <laughs> you know, you can't move and can't do anything right. Uh, uh, absolutely not. Fear it, is, it's not to say it's not scary, right? It, no, it is scary. I, it, it is scary. scary. It absolutely. Yeah, it is. I've been in those situations, yeah. I have to say, mm -hmm. where you're in a room and all of a sudden that cold air comes in and I'm not talking about a drafty window. <laughs> I know. <laughs> there's a, right. There's a, there's a definite cold air that is psychic cold air and that gives you goose pimples that's how mm -hmm. you know when you feel an entity is is there oh yeah and that, you know, you know yeah. that's not you know it's scary because you don't can't see it you don't know it and then of course it starts to move things like tables and but it's taking that time to inst 
I mean, to realize I, I'm doing this because I want to know. So when those situations happen, I can't run away frightened. I can feel the fear and yeah. do it anyway because this is my job is to learn, right. help, grow. Right. Yeah. Period. You have to have a goal. I mean, there's a reason. Yes. What is, I yes. mean, what is your goal? What is your reasoning? Why are you mm. doing what you're doing? If it's to tinkle in your britches and run out the front door, <laughs> plenty of people are doing that already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck it, it gets them. ratings, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> good luck to them. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enjoy that laundry bill. To each his own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we do have a lot of questions coming in from the chat, and one of them from Sharon Lane kind of played in plays into the uh, direction this conversation has been going uh, the last few minutes. Uh, Sharon was wondering if you had spirits follow you home from haunted locations. No, I've been very lucky that I don't feel I've ever had anything being attached to me. Okay. Coming home with me without my consent. Otherwise, they have to pay rent. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no roommates. <laughs> <laughs> no roommates. <laughs> did say she was practical, folks. Yeah. Right? Practical. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, I yeah, I, I haven't gotten any money out of any of them yet. Yeah, I know it can happen. <laughs> I've heard these stories. I it, and it can happen, mm -hmm. no doubt about it. Uh, I don't have a sensation that I've had that issue. Thank thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Um, Victoria Monday was just, we kind of talked about this a little bit, but doesn't intuition generally uh, come through the mother's side of the family? Not necessarily. Yeah. Okay. I think it can I come from both can. sides, right? Yeah. Uh, Hans was very intuitive. Sure. As a man. Later in life, I think he became, remember the story, which... You Your know, father was very intuitive. Do you remember with Muzi, when Muzi had passed and Uncle Tony heard his vision of what he saw her coming back. Yeah, he saw her, yeah. Reannounce herself to him that she had made it okay. Mm -hmm. That was like, I think, a pinnacle moment for him because he was so stuck in being the skeptic, scientific, academic- the Investigator, role, the investigator. Right, that he forgot the part of himself that we all have in this world, the intuitive side. We're all mm -hmm. born with that six yeah. yeah. He was intuitive when he could do psychometry. Right. Remember? Uh, psychometry, do you know what that is, Vanessa? Yes. And Mike, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he would do psychometry and could uh, get impressions with that. Mm -hmm. so Although, I you know what? Our viewers might not know what that is. So okay, if you want. Yeah, psychom I'm sorry. Psychometry is when you take an object that belongs to the person and only to the person, like a ring, even a comb that didn't belong to someone else. And by holding it with his hands and just feeling the object, he would get impressions. Mm -hmm. and, and so like, Hans was pretty good at that. So he was good at that. Okay. He good. was able to do that. That's and a definite cards. gift. Don't forget, he also did the Zener cards. There, and also the cards, yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, an interesting question here from Murtaza Arif, since you're an artist, Catherine. Uh, what part do you think interior design plays in the paranormal? For me, I think it opens up my <laughs> spatial sense of space. New feng shui. <laughs> yeah. That's an awesome question. It is a good question. What does it have to do with a space? I could get, I to say it again. I got interrupted. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what part do you think interior design <laughs> plays in the paranormal? Yes. He believes it, it opens up his spatial sense of space. All right. Well, I don't, I don't see the connection with the paranormal. Okay. Frankly, in terms of space, no, that's purely... Maybe energy. Well, that's feng shui and how you lay out your furniture, uh, things of that nature. Uh, is That's a whole other thing. Not paranormal. On that same note, have you it's ever... Energy. That's energy. You're talking about energy here. Yeah. Have yeah. you ever went in um, and designed for a house that was haunted? No, I primarily worked in uh, what they call contract design, which was office space. Okay. Commercial okay. space. Okay. I did do residential much later, but no, I did not uh, do anything in a haunted house. She used to bring okay. home those little fake trees. Oh my <laughs> God. I used to do uh -oh. like, house. Do you remember that, Mom? They yes. were the most awesome little miniature of everything you can imagine. And I didn't realize it was for work. So I'd be like, mine. Mine. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I know but, what you're talking about when but, you're d doing the outside and everything. Yeah. But let me ask you this, though. Um, since with that, you are creating a type of energy. Could that perhaps attract something paranormal or supernatural that may enjoy that type of energy and inhabiting the energy that you have created with the way you've arranged the space? I don't think so. I don't think it's connected. Uh, okay. Energy field coming from the outside has to have a reason to, to be there. It's a free-flowing spirit. The spirit has to be there because it's connecting with you on some level. Either it knows you, it's connecting with you, but it's not because of the space. Okay. Or if it's uh, an app, something that's coming up, it's because something was there before. Yep. Fair enough. Had to ask. That makes sense. <laughs> that that makes sense. It does. Yes, it doesn't matter. You know, apparitions or hauntings or guests or guys uh, have nothing to do necessarily with the space. It's what it's either in, what it's sitting on, uh, as in uh, June Havoc's situation. Her uh, apartment complex was on top of Potter's Field. It had nothing to do with the house, but what was under what he was sitting on. Right. That, that actually tends to happen a lot too. Created the yes, yeah, so that can happen. You can buy a piece of land, and maybe there was some horror that happened there, and you build a house on top of it, or something's buried under there, or that it's not, you know. And you can put a house there, and all of a sudden you've got a whole bunch of disturbances. And their their first thought is, well, my house isn't old. So that's right. Doesn't have nothing, to be. <laughs> it doesn't have to be. It's where it's sitting very often times or what mm -hmm. was there before. Absolutely correct. Yeah, yeah, so many before, times it's the land. Yeah, the land. A lot of stories with uh, Indians uh, mm -hmm. with the land. Now, you live on the East Coast, close to where I'm looking at going. Do you find that that area of the country tends to be a little bit higher <laughs> Inactivity. <laughs> because well, I'm see where Italian. you're going with this, Vanessa. <laughs> That's uh, I don't know, Vanessa, because since I'm not in the field anymore and I really don't look for it, gotcha. I don't really know what's happening. Okay. As far as where I am. Although, and for another show down the road with Mother, yeah. yes. she has her own experiences oh. where she has moved to, but we we don't have time to get into it. Yeah. But okay. Let's, she calls me. I take the call. Send me pictures now. I need to see before and after. <laughs> I become my father, like not even understanding knowingly. She's like, what do you think? I'm t I was sitting here one minute. This thing moved. The next minute she lives alone, mind you. No pets, nothing. And that'll yeah. be a story for another time. Remember yeah, that, Mom? More, there, are, there are a lot of, yeah, there are more stories, but we won't go into it now. No, but, and that's in Asheville. So, okay. But, there you go. Well, uh, then we we might have to go and check that out. Yes, Alex. I will have to show. Actually, I will show it to you. I will show it to you the next time. I'm going to show you what she's bringing up. Okay, good. So I, that you I, understand what it is. Yes, inquiring minds want to know. Okay. Well, the inquiring oh, mind has to wait a little bit. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. It really oh. is. I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you guys are great. Um, <laughs> now, this has been really fun tonight, and everybody down in the chat is is really enjoying it. So let me uh, try to get a couple more of these questions. Uh, Betty Lange was wondering real quick. I know we kind of covered this uh, earlier in the show, but for those coming in a little bit later, uh, how old were you when you met Hans? How old was I? Yeah. Uh, 21, 22. Okay. I married at 24. Okay. Well, at least you dated for a while. <laughs> I actually did the same thing. I met my ex-husband at 21 and married at 24. Aww. Aww. That's very weird. <laughs> I know, right? How cute. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> Mom, you still got some New Yorkness showing in you. Um, I can't. But you can take the woman out of New York. You can't take the New York out of the woman. I love New York. I'm working on it on my end, though. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, why, are you try why are you trying to be less New York? I don't. Well, actually, I think I am. I think my husband, who's Mr. Tuscaloosa. Yeah. Hang on, Max Sugar. I haven't forgotten that. I can't even say it again. But <laughs> he now, with his twang like you... Sometimes he'll sit there and goes, well, gosh darn it. He's like, oy vey. And I'm like, oy vey. 
He's not even rubbing off on him. (laughs) What did I say before we even went on air? You You did. You did. (laughs) Maybe I should go away for a while because I don't know if if it's a good thing that everybody's going to walk around going, Oi, (laughs) and ghosts and spirits and Oi. And you're from the back. You know, well, I'm and trying then, to learn the southern, <laughs> southern greetings. No, no, we we <laughs> told Alex. We told Alex the last time. Uh, bless your heart, honey. Oh, That's I remember right. that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't bless your heart. heart. <laughs> That's when somebody has irritated the dickens out of you, or whatever, and you're just like, bless your heart. That's not a good one. That's not a compliment. But the person you're saying it to won't know it. Mom, it's like in Puerto Rico, we say fungu you, you know. Yeah, I've heard some Bingo. of these. Yes. Yeah. To the, new, the New York way is the direct way. Yeah, basically, get that up out of here. That's it. It just comes straight. <laughs> I prefer the New York way. <laughs> so we, we just can't... say it. We just like, get the F out of the way. What part don't you understand? You either move or you don't. I'm still moving this way. <laughs> this makes me so happy. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Mom, listen, driving in a car with you is awesome. That's another story for another time, too. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Listen, Uh-oh. lady. How the F close do you think you're going to get to my ass back there? <laughs> she's a countess, everybody. I promise she's very eloquent. <laughs> you want to get out of the car. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to be very specific, you know, Mother and, is, and that's okay. That's She's all right. calm and polite, even if you're riding up her rear end ass. But inside the car, the vocal conversation is very different, and her inner monologue comes out. And I'm just mm-hmm. sitting there going, "Right on, mom. FM, FM." Yeah, the car is a totally different environment from everywhere else. You, you become haunted. a different person. It's not haunted. <laughs> it's not haunted. <laughs> no. Blame it on the spirits. <laughs> okay. Riding for free. Yeah, the spirits, the spirits are riding for free in my car. <laughs> <laughs> That is all. Awesome. I was thinking of the time in New Hope, Pennsylvania, where that yes. stupid lady hit I us remember. at five miles an hour. Yes. I got out of the car. Like, and <laughs> my mother is so calm. She's a Libra, very balanced. And I'm sitting with her, and she gets, she's like, Alex, wait here. <laughs> all I know, and I'm looking at the back like any kid would. Of course. And she's like, <laughs> and she gets back at the car. There's no damage to the back. We are proceeding forward now. We're going to get that hot apple cider here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> can't hide. <laughs> Mothers can't hide. <laughs> oh, I need to learn that because I would have been all over that. I would I would have been pulling insults from Golden Girls. You big bodgegaloop. I would have done something along those lines. <laughs> it would have not been pretty. So, <laughs> Alex, are you okay, love? No, I'm just picturing mother also. She has she had a driving glove. A driving <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> I'm a style. I wasn't style. Just like this. Before 50 Cent was cool and all those people, I don't know what their names are. I'm too old for this at this point. But my mom's like She set the trend. <laughs> yep. That is racing awesome. gloves. They were racing driving racing gloves. Racing gloves. <laughs> Of course, the car is automatic. I didn't really kind of have what to work hard. What does Fleetwood Mac say? <laughs> what you have Fleetwood Mac? It's hard to be with Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. No. Oh, Fleetwood Mac. I love. Yes. That's. He's that was a period of time. Yes. The 70s. Oh, yes. Stevie Nicks is my girl. Okay, and I had the hugest <laughs> crush on Lindsey Buckingham. I don't care oh, if yeah. he was trash. I, I don't care, but yum. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. I'm all right. All right. Continue on, Mike. Don't get too hot. Don't get too heated over there. <laughs> Woo! I just think it was <laughs> that this was all going on, and then we start singing to the song. And as everybody has experienced watching the show and beyond, that we start off with the lyrics, and my mom goes, "How does it go again?" And I'm like, 
we'll just kind of make it up as we go. Whoa. That's all <laughs> you need to do. I can never remember the words. <laughs> so I make them up. I know. That's awesome. Anyway. That just made my day. <laughs> Excellent driver. That's what happens Very when you're fun. human. <laughs> exactly. Right. right. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Did you I, heard laughed something? So hard I, had to, I laughed so hard I had to pop my back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my mother, let me tell you, she look, she's beautiful. She's standing. Absolutely. Let me tell you, does she look 80 to you? No. What? No. I mean, that's mom. I told you. What did oh. I tell you? Hmm? No. Yeah, I would not have guessed that. No. Yeah. No. Uh oh. Uh oh. It's just a no. Number. Daddy used yeah. to say that 80. Just a number. See, he's looking at you right now going, There you go. Catherine? Uh -huh. <laughs> but did I tell you? It's nothing. You easy now. I look down upon you. It's nothing. What's wrong with you? Go do your driving thing. Whatever you do. I don't drive. I don't know. <laughs> Put your glove on. <laughs> Put your glove on. I love it when Alex does the the accents. We'll put the gloves on to hide the wrinkles. Oh, stop. <laughs> you are stunning. I hope I look that good at that. That's what I keep saying. She's, yes. you know, and it's like, listen, my father probably gave some of the wrinkles that aren't even visible to her because when we were driving as a family and my mother would put on the AC because that's what you do when it's summer in the car, right? And he goes, Katy, Katy, turn this off. I get a cold. It's too much air on me. And my mother's like, <laughs> the only driver in the family, my poor mother, who's got to get us out of Manhattan to a summer oh. house for rental, right? So, and here's my father the whole time. Oh, this back seat, I can't get comfortable. How do you move this thing? Turn off the AC. I need fresh air. Meanwhile, the fresh, hot air is coming in. My poor mother's like, I could just feel her. Like, like, ah, let's just find the house and get there, please. Oh, my God. But we left him home after a while. I, I, I realized why. I don't Daddy blame you there. <laughs> Where's we went Daddy? alone. We went alone. <laughs> now I know why Daddy's not in the car. Oh, this is much easier. I could see what, what Mom was thinking. <laughs> yeah, because New York is friggin' hot in the summertime. Well, listen, you can get that way, yeah. Right. There's but a my magic. father didn't like the air on him. He wanted the fresh, hot air. Yes, yes. Mm. He would start mm. coughing or sneezing. He was sneezing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was so sneezing. So he was a violent sneezer? Yeah, he's 20, 25 at a count. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. He could take, he could take yeah. somebody he, out and they could probably he, file charges. I don't know what you would put it under. <laughs> sneezing assault, but something would happen. My wow. poor mother. Oh, my God. So bad. So just to let you know, we do have some comments down in the chat uh -oh. that nobody believes that you are 80. Uh, Told Chip you. Chipper Terry says so both Holzer women are uh, beautiful. Uh, oh. Candy Orton says she is stunning. Age means nothing. So uh, I, Eileen Munson says she's gorgeous. So, yes, they are all complimenting you. Oh, most definitely. And they're all laughing at the sneezing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, 25 times is... Oh my God! If I do, oh bless your heart, sweetheart, you froze right and now. There. She froze right there. Oh my goodness! Look at <laughs> that's a good expression. <laughs> that's, that's not a good expression to be frozen. At. Yeah, you don't want to be frozen Look on at that my expression. <laughs> Normally, it's me, and it's some really <laughs> pathetic looking. There it goes. Back. There she I'm is. Back. You're back. Whatever you just did, we didn't see. You toes in a very oh, compromising that's okay. expression. You don't have to worry about it. Really, it's fine. <laughs> No, I was saying that the, my father's sneezing is actually a running joke in the house, that his grandchildren, uh, the oldest, so Nicole, Danielle, who's second in line, and then there's me. The others don't sneeze like this. We literally sneeze for 10 to 15 times. And when I do it, I'm holding on to the wall for dear life because I don't know if I'm going to kiss myself, number one. Were you going flying? I, well, yes, there's that. And as I'm aging, you, are and you I, propelling? <laughs> when it comes out like daddy, it's like, yeah. It's just like all the kids together are like cockroaches. And and then they do it. Oh, it's wow. contagious. It's oh contagious. my gosh. 
Yeah, that's funny. Mom, you were you didn't you, when you sneeze, you go. I'm quiet. A quiet sneezer. Yeah. You do one of those little cute sneezes. Okay. Yeah, I'm a quiet sneezer. Okay. He's polite. She's so polite, but me, I'm, I'm a just polite like, sneezer. A polite sneezer. There you yeah, go. A polite sneezer. <laughs> yeah, if, if we can't sneeze in front of you, mom, when you visit because we're afraid to be rude. Because just hold it. Not... Just hold it. Till <laughs> I just <leave>. hold it. <laughs> yeah. If you so hold that's it, just, guess that's, the end. That would be you like the countess and you coming out. It's a very regal sneeze. Yes. Thank okay. You. <laughs> well, good for you. We can't all be regal like you, mother. I can't do it. That's too bad. I can't do it. If I hold it in the way you want me to, it's going to come out somewhere else. And it's not going to be pretty. That's, that's we'll a to, very we'll have, valid point. Yes. Uh, Vanessa, we'll have to negotiate that point. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know what? It's negotiation. <laughs> oh, you make me happy. Uh, this has been so much fun. It has been. It has been. And I hate to say it, but we are at our hour mark. That was fast. It so, was. Mom, do you have... So, Mike, can we talk about where her artwork is? Yes, I was going to Please. ask that. Where Where can we find your artwork? Uh, on my wall. Do you have enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I put them. <laughs> I put them there. So, all right, everybody, just everybody go to Catherine's house and, and look yeah, at her walls. Choose what you want. Give best offering. <laughs> no, I um, where I don't have a website or anything. I gave them a link. I sent them a link. Yeah, yeah, we have some links. So I, I, I put the links. They should be in the description. Uh, if. If they're not, I'll, and I'll double check, I'll put them there. So, okay. yeah. Well, and what was interesting, though, let me tell everybody real quick. If you go to the link, I'm going to pull it up real quick and look um, and make sure that I'm getting the right one here. If you go there, um, you can, according to this website that you sent us, the link that you sent us, Alex, you can get wall art, home decor, um, stationery, phone cases, different things like yeah, that. Yeah. So there are... Um, there are many ways that you can get her artwork. If you don't have space on the wall, you can get one on a coffee mug. You know, I mean, you can get one that's in a tote right, bag. Right. Yeah, yeah I so. Am, I am in one of those lines, actually. Um, I think it's under Fine Arts. It, um, uh, Fine Is Art it, America. Yeah, Fine Art America. Yeah, I'm in yeah. that. I yes. have my work in that. Yeah, I, I am in that. I, I totally forgot about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have me to know where to send people to whatever. Just send <laughs> See, yeah, that is... some... yes. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, oh, no problem. I just want people to know because I mean, not everybody has the wall space for wall art, but if they truly love something that you've done, there's so many other ways that they can. That's right. They, they can, can enjoy it, it for a very little money. Mm -hmm. They can sell prints. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. so for that. our YouTube viewers, you can get that link down in the description. And for the podcast listeners later on, when this goes up on iHeartRadio and Spotify and all that, the link is fineartamerica.com slash profiles slash Catherine dash So there you go. Or just contact one of us. Or, we'll yeah, you it. can do that too. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the easier way. So, no. ladies, this has been absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate uh, you guys coming on the show. Catherine, this was an exclusive with you, and we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. It's It's been Thank an absolute you. honor. Yeah. And nice meeting you both. Nice, nice seeing my daughter, Alex. Hey, Mom. Nice, <laughs> to <see you. laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you. Okay. No, no, say it right, Alex. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I do get about it. Hey. Hey, okay. Hey. Fungo <laughs> you. You know, say it, all right? That's an insult to me. Fungo this Love shit. You. Love you. Love you. Right. you. Have a great night. And Alex, thanks again for setting this up. This has been fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. She's, come on now. Oh, she's, she's amazing. Very, you know, Catherine, you're awesome. amazing. We'll do it again. We'll absolutely. Yes. We'd love to. Oh, good Lord. Now we're in trouble. <laughs> I wear my gloves. Don't yes. you can't. wear the gloves? Yes. I wear my gloves. It's probably all dried up and wrinkled at this point. It's all. It's so I like can use the mouse. 
Use, use the mouse. Use the mouse, mouse with gloves. gloves. It's gonna be my mouse gloves. <laughs> That's way too funny. I know what that looks like. <laughs> you started it, Alex. I can't help it. She brings it out of me. It's not my fault. Blame it on mother, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> always blame it on your mother. The... Yes. That That's... works. Oh. Me. <laughs> That's how it well... works. <laughs> We will do this again. Definitely. And we because uh, I have I have needed this laugh <laughs> so much. So <laughs> mwah, bless you both. It was it was necessary. Bless you too. <laughs> have a wonderful In night. In a good way. In a good way. In a good way. Bless you too. Yes, of course. Thank you. Now, mom, do you know how to get off this thing? Yeah, uh, we just click X. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna click the end video anyway. So. <laughs> we just we X out. You we can just X, X out. out. You want to X out together? Okay, one, Ooh. two. And Mike and Vanessa, love you guys. <laughs> love Mwah, you, Love too. you, hun. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Three. Oh, here we go. I'm out. I'm a, I don't know where oh, I am. No, nope. oh, you're no, both still here. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, insist you have to leave to me. <laughs> Mom, this is your fault. I'm much cooler when I'm doing this. And oh, now there she Nope, there it is. Just close the lid. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried it. It doesn't work. I just put the lid, I just put the lid down. Do that. <laughs> oh I mean, I could just boot you, but, you know, I figured you'd want to gracefully leave rather than have me kick right. you out. Well, try, I'm trying the exes, but. Mom, it says, do you want to leave this meeting? Oh, I see. It says leave right. me. Right, so then you say leave me. Ready? Oh, I see. Okay. Can oh, my leave? God. I'm what? hitting the red. Leave me. Oh, She's gone. <laughs> oh, my, oh God. my God. That was far too funny. <laughs> they are so awesome. My stomach hurts. Yeah. From laughing so much. That was amazing. Yeah. Let me let me resize you here because that like. Oh, they were funny. Uh, they are hilarious. Yep. Oh, goodness. Yeah. We really have to thank uh, Alex for setting that up. Um, uh, uh, Catherine doesn't do this sort of thing. And, no. and Alex approached us with, hey, you know, would you be open to having my mother come on the show and, you know, talk about her art and experiences with Hans and, and all of that? It's like, uh, Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course. So it was a real treat. It was a real treat. So um, um, aside oh. from that little bit of echo, how mm -hmm. was the sound? Um yeah, the, the new headset, I, I think, is working well for you. I think the Echo actually um, was coming from one of their setups. Okay. So, okay. and there's really nothing we could have done about that unless yeah. they would have put headphones on, but it's all right. I can I can hear you and everyone else so much mm -hmm. better with Oh, these. I'm sure. I'm sure. And I'm not jacking with the hair. <laughs> so, score. Cool. All righty, but I, I'm going to be very honest with you. Would you mind if, if I popped out of here? Because I have to hit the ladies' room. All right, that's fine. I'll close it up. Do you mind? No. Because they made me mind. laugh so hard. That's fine. To go to the <laughs> Do what you need. Right. She, she needs to tinkle, everybody. I gotta go tinkle. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Take care. So, all right. So there goes Vanessa. Let me close down that little window and we'll get to the shout outs. I want to thank uh, Quarantine Ghost, of course, for moderating the chat. I think uh, she had to take off there uh, as well. So, um, it, I mean, it's a Thursday night. We don't usually do it Thursday nights, but this was a, a special, um, you know, that uh, that Alex put together for us with her mother. And that was at an absolute treat. So uh, we thank Alex. We thank Catherine for joining us. Um of course, Vanessa and Quarantine Ghost. So let's get to the shout outs. I want to thank our Deep Down the Rabbit Hole Patreon patrons, Tom McNicholas, B3 Airspace, Pamela Queen, Joe Chandler, Andrew Cox, Dustin Samario, and Trucker David Y. David E. Isley. So thank you all very, very much for being Deep Down the Rabbit Hole Patreon patrons and supporting us out there. Uh, Patreon.com slash Hunter Road Media is where you can look into that. Of course, we have many other uh, Patreon patrons. And the uh, latest video that went up for that is a full 25 minute in the basement of the Wildwood uh, Sanitarium. It's like the full version of the clips that we'd put up for the investigation video. So, um, so yeah, they're, they are enjoying that there. Um, all right, so let's get to the shout outs here. 
So go to the participants tab and we'll get into it. Uh, Barefoot Paranormal, thanks for joining us tonight. There's Candy Orton and Chipper Terry. Thank you guys very, very much. Eileen Munson, thanks for joining us tonight. On Road Media's Fairy Queen, Diane Hilbert. Thank you as always. There's grand old folks, Betty Lange. Thank you as well. Helen Espinoza and Jill Nimchinski. Thank you both very much. Murtaza Arif. Thank you as well. Pungai Fungai. Great to see you tonight. There's Tom McNicholas. Uh, Tigger Jan, Tim Schoen, uh, Will Gildner. Thank you all very much. There's Rosella C. Rowe as well. And then I know that's not everybody from the participants tab. Eileen of the Fam or Alina the Fam. Thank you very much. It's kind of actually, things are going in and out of the participants tab. I don't know how YouTube figures that out. But um, let's scroll through here, see who the participants tab missed, because it does that. Um, and it missed, well, there's Victoria Monday. Uh, Catherine Smith, thanks for joining us tonight. Gwen Croft, thank you as well. Uh, let's see, anybody else here? And we've got to do this for Tim. So this episode of Edge of the Rabbit Hole is brought to you by Haunted Road Roast. It helps you hunt ghosts. There you go. All right. Uh, anybody else, if you want to shout out, quickly throw it down into the chat because we are going to sign off here very soon. And there is a little bit of a delay between the chat and um, what you guys actually see. So... Um, I think that's going to really about do it. So coming up Tuesday night, like I said, this was a special night that we were running Edge of the Rabbit Hole. We'll go back, of course, Tuesday night. It's our regular time, 9.30 Eastern, followed by Beyond the Shadows. This coming Tuesday night on Edge of the Rabbit Hole, we have Freddie Silver returning to us. Uh, you may remember him from last year where we got into a lot of different things about uh, energy grids, ley lines, ancient sites of power, that sort of thing. This coming Tuesday, we're going to be talking about missing lands, basically the world before the flood and uh, how things changed during that time and a lot of the different uh, customs that lost civilization, well, different customs that current civilizations or ancient civilizations uh, had put in place concerning the lost civilizations. So, uh, yep, there's B3 Airspace and uh, I already got Tigger Jan. So anybody else? I think that's going to be it. And all right. So, all right, everybody. You guys have a wonderful weekend. We do have coming out on the Honda Road Media YouTube channel a new Friday night video, of course, coming out tomorrow. So be sure to check that out as well. That is going to be going into tulpas. What are they? And we'll get into some different examples of what tulpas actually are. Uh, one of which actually does touch on a case that Hans Holzer had investigated in Greenwich Village in New York. So, all right. You guys have a great night. Fantastic weekend. Till next time.